You want to know where we at? We outside! Out and guess what? We're taking the show on the road. Carlos Watson show in LA for the entire week. I love LA. It'll be a hell of a night. <laughs> so we literally did all this just for this moment. Yeah, yeah. Dope. Let's do this again. Carlos Watson. Don't miss a beat. We're going to bring you all the good stuff from the City of Angels. It's going to be good. Show up for the Carlos Watson show. We'll show up for you. Hey family, Carlos Watson here. LA Week rolls on the most interesting people in the city of angels, musicians, actors, athletes. We got everyone. Today we have a woman who stars on the rise, Lily Rabe. What a wonderful actor. You've seen her in every season of American Horror Story. You also see her in Barry Jenkins' new project, Underground Railroad. And now she's in a big new movie with George Clooney, Ben Affleck. You don't want to miss her in the tender bar. We're also going to stop by the Comedy Store. You know that legendary place, Pauly Shore and others. We're going to get shown around. You're going to enjoy that, too. Hey, sit back and enjoy Lily Rafe. What a wonderful actor. Lily, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so glad to be out and about. Me, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you been good about quarantine? Have you been running around town what have you been doing i i i didn't leave i didn't leave my house i was yeah. lucky enough to not have to leave my house but i didn't leave my house for i had my baby at home i oh. did not um, i really yeah. did not walk out the front door for a very uh, very long period of time are you more introvert or extrovert yes introvert interesting although you have that nice gleam in your eye oh. of, of do you know what i mean of a of a fun introvert if i could say that but my partner who is an actor is uh, you know he's an extrovert to the extreme, but it, it, I think there is something, at least for me, that uh, when I'm acting, I, I do get to, I'm, it's not really, oh, you know, so there's like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, it's so interesting to me because I feel like I've met a number of artists who, for whatever reason, I would, ex I don't know, and this is again, my narrow view of the world, I always thought because you guys do such beautiful jobs on stage and on screen, that, that you were extroverts, that you'd want to be there. And I've heard from probably more than I expected. I said, no, no, I'm actually an introvert. Yeah. Yeah. No, if I have to yeah. get up and give a toast. Yeah, right, right, uh, right. I'm a nervous wreck. Yeah. Do you ever take advantage of that kind of acting perspective and just say, let me play this role? Or Absolutely. Let me do it? Okay, 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 <laughs> yeah. okay, okay, yeah, okay. That helps me. Uh, Give a better, a better, yeah. <laughs> better toast. Yeah. Do it in an accent. Now. Yeah. Are you good with accents? I am. This is wrong. Oh, wrong. Murder. All rot and black. This will not be forgiven. What's the toughest accent you've had to learn? I just did. Yeah. Um, in Underground Railroad, there was oh, that, was, that had a yeah. sort of very specific dialect that I, I don't know if it was the toughest, but I kind okay. of loved it the most. And then I just did a, a movie with a with another very thick accent that, you know, sometimes when the accent's really big, right. it's sort of which isn't the case in, in Underground, but in this other project, it, it was a big accent. And, and that was actually terrifying because you sort of think, oh, this is this is, this is it feels so big, but yeah. actually that's. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. You have to go. You, have, have, to you, have, you, have, you have to lead all the yeah. way into it. Because you guys have a really subtle version <laughs> right, of this right, accent. Right, and right. Like, no, actually, this yeah. should not be subtle. Yeah. Yeah. The communists infect my mind with words that just keep repeating. The Jews are helping them too. The Jews want to keep the Chess Federation all to themselves, just like they own New York and own and control most governments in the world. We, we are Jewish. Bobby is Jewish. What do you people say to him when he comes out with this trash? You gotta own it yeah. all the way. Yeah, and that's yeah. always a challenge. It's you that will end in flames. I swear it. And how is it doing Horror Story? Because it feels like Ryan Murphy just loves you. And, oh, I love Ryan Murphy. And you just keep showing up season after season, but different roles. How do you, do you enjoy it still? Which I know is I do. probably a crazy question to ask, but, but no, do you still enjoy it? No, it's not a crazy it? question because I think for a lot of shows, getting yeah. to season 10 yeah. might not have that feeling right. of, yeah. Um, yeah. but with Horror Story, every season is new. And I think, you know, there's just the, the, the world of the show and the tone of the show is so unique. So yeah. we keep coming back because yeah. it's the greatest job and yeah. you're working for such a wonderful yeah. boss um, who who just gets it in a way that nobody else does. And the show is so, uh, so satisfying to do. Be fearless. We can do it. I believe in you. We can do it. 
do it faster! Our home is the training ground for her dreams policy. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. There's so many things that I now am appreciating more that you get a chance to master or at least experiment with as an actor, like even memorizing things. Yeah. Like I am, how do you go about it? Learning lines, everyone does it so differently. I, I do have a, an easy-ish time oh, okay. with it. It's like the, this saying it, just saying it, saying it, saying it, which is something when you do a play, you get to do because you have all this rehearsal time, but often you don't with the, with film and TV. So, and is that just because it's more expensive? Yeah. I feel like that's the answer to everything, yeah. always. <laughs> so I'm gonna say yes. Right, right, always uh, the dollars, right? But right. I don't know for sure. Right, right. Do you get nervous when you go out on stage? Every time. You do? Yeah. Yes. And have you ever blanked? Up, I've had right. terrible laughing, like breaking, <laughs> laughing. Okay, <I'm laughs> Terrible, right, okay. devastating. Right, right. It's not something yeah. I've made a, yeah. you know, a real habit of, right, but it has right. happened. Um, there was something with Hamish, actually, we were doing Much To Do About Nothing, and he was playing Benedict, and I was playing Beatrice, and he in, he sort of inverted a line, and it came out terribly inappropriately. And I'm waiting to make my entrance, and he said it. Hey. He heard himself say it, <laughs> and then he said to the thousands of people at Shakespeare in the Park, Nope. <laughs> At which point, uh, yeah. he just started sort of weeping with tears, and uh, I was weeping. And we were uh, just kind of weeping through yeah. the scene. And the, uh, I mean, you know, it's like there is something terribly delicious about, about those moments. How long have you guys been together? Were you guys acting together? Or? He was acting with my mother. And they did a pilot that didn't get picked up, and then they did a play together. They yeah. had this wonderful... Yeah relationship but I sort of I really knew him in this way of like I would go see my mom after her show yeah. and go out for a drink and uh, and it was her friend and then we ended up doing um, we did Merchant of Venice together that was when I really got to know him but still nothing romantic we just became very close friends and then we sort of kept getting cat we did another play with Alan Rickman we did a independent movie to get we just kept getting cast opposite one another and then eventually I had a friend who sort of helped my mom out as like a part-time assistant but really they were just friends right, right. Um, and he told me a story after she had died that uh, there was some night where they had gone out I think with Paul Mazursky and with Hamish for dinner and my friend was walking my mom to the car and she said you know, I wish that Lily could find someone like Hamish. I think that's the right type of yeah, sort of yeah, soul. Yeah. Because when she died, I was single, and I remember saying to my best friend, like, well, I'll just, I'll be single forever because I have no interest in being with someone who didn't know her. I don't want to explain her to someone, and I don't want to explain what our relationship was. And then, I didn't have to. Yeah. I really am with someone who tells me stories about my mother. How great is that? Yeah, it's pretty great. You can appreciate how much uh, people can appreciate your work on so many different levels, meaning not only entertainment, but you, you saw people say that you're telling that story. But I think if I really if I'm really, and I've never yeah. been asked that question, if I really think about what the answer might be. Yeah. My mom had a very funny thing about, it was incredibly incongruous. She sort of thought of herself, um, she would always say, you know, but you're much stronger than me. You're so much stronger than I was. You're so much stronger than I am. She was such an incredibly strong woman. Yeah. Because for a lot of, yeah. it's hard. Yeah, it's right, that, that right. sort of when you don't know what's next. Right, and yeah, yeah. she was incredible at it, but I don't know that she was always. Like, I think that was something she came to as she got older, as she had kids. And we were so incredibly connected and close. But I think she just wanted to feel like, you've got to make this choice for yourself if you're going to make this choice. And then I will be there for you. And of course, she was. Were you definitely going to do acting because your mom did it? Was that, do you feel like that was like written in the stars? I, I actually felt quite a bit of shame, I think, 
going into the industry that my parents were in. I think I felt like I want to have my own path and not feel like anything was sort of paved for me. And so I think that was sort of really my roundabout. And I loved writing in school, which was, you know, it was like my dad was saying, just don't, don't write. It's really lonely and it's really, <laughs> my mom was like, well, don't be an actress. This industry is insane. Um, and then, you know, those were the things that I loved and dance. My only sexual object to you. Now you're a bright, willful, curious woman who is also a sexual object. <laughs> Do you want to see other women? Do you want to see other men? Not today. Did she ever talk about the work she did in An Unmarried Woman? Yeah. And how did that shape what kind of mom she was? Oh my gosh, it was really groundbreaking, yeah. Yeah. that story yeah. at the time. Yeah. And yeah. I, you know, women would come up when I was young and sort of stop her about that movie and say, thank you, thank you. This, it really did give me the strength to make this choice. There was this palpable gratitude from people towards my mother that of course I really didn't understand. I was very young and, and my mom did sort of shelter me from the business as much as she could. But you could feel that from I guess in a way I felt it more from others. I assume that may have also played into your openness to acting. Oh, That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah I did. I had so. never thought about that yeah. before. May mom, uh, may mom rest in peace. She was an incredible, she was the, we were, <laughs> yes, I was, I was very much in love with her, I still am. So you just did a movie with a couple of interesting people. I did. I finished season 10 of a horror story recently, and then I did this movie called The Tender Bar that George Clooney directed. How was doing it with Clooney? He is just the dream. Is he? Yeah. Is he really? He is the dream. Is he? I think I kind of want to meet him. <laughs> yeah, I think you yeah, should. Yeah. I think you should. Okay. I, I have a feeling the, okay. the feeling would be mutual hey. between you. Hey, George, come see me. <laughs> come see me. Lily says you're worth meeting. Come see yeah. me. Yeah. He's. He's such a wonderful director. The joy on that set was really palpable. Because he's a leader. He's um, incredibly curious and uh, so smart and so funny. And I loved, I loved uh, everything about it. I loved the the story we were telling, and I loved, I loved working with him. And I really, I really value him as a as a. A person. And, and what was it about? The Tender Bar is a memoir yeah, okay. uh, by this guy, Jerem Warringer, and it was adapted by William Monaghan. It's sort of a coming of age story about this uh, boy, single mother, dad is out of the picture of, he's very, very present, right. but not right. in their lives. And they keep running out of money, they have to move back home, and Ben Affleck plays uh, my brother, and he works at a bar, and the bar sort of becomes this place of refuge and discovery and uh, for, for this boy. All right, before I let you go, I want to do something I love, I call rapid fire. Okay. What's your favorite book? Birds of America, Laurie Moore. Ooh. It's short stories. Yeah, planes, trains, and automobiles. Who are you? Are you planes, trains, or automobiles? Train. Train. But I don't know why I said that. Are you a good flyer? There's still kind of a magic for me. Yeah. For getting up in the air. I know it sounds completely hokey. No. Your favorite meal. If someone wanted to thrill you, what would they what would they make for you? Oh, oysters. Who would you love to have dinner with? Uh, dead or alive? The Obamas. Oh, both. Oh, can I have the whole family? Do you have, oh, that's kind of <laughs> nice. What's your uh, karaoke song? You can call me out. I can call you baby. You can call me, me out, out yeah. by um, Paul, Paul Simon. Simon. Yeah. Where will I get to see you in 10 years? In will Venice? Be, oh, good answer. Well, thank you for doing this. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Truly. Hey, really hope you enjoyed Lily Rabe. What a down-to-earth person. She's good, interesting person. Just good energy everywhere. And what a wonderful actor. Wishing her all the best. So many good things ahead. Hey, now from the screen to the stage, we're heading over to the iconic comedy store. Now, you know that's where lots of comics got their first big break. Pauly Shore, Eric Griffin are going to show us around. You don't want to miss this. I'm Eric Griffin. <laughs> he's he's a comedian, uh, actor. And also brother of uh, Blake Griffin, who's now playing on the Nets, who's actually doing a great job. He doesn't dunk as much. Tell me about your brother not dunking as much. 
<laughs> I'm an actor, comedian, and um, producer. Producer. Mm -hmm. Club owner. I don't know. If I that's... don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who are you yeah, now? Are... Have you watched these these cult shows of the cult leaders? I've kind of turned into like the David Koresh of comedy. <laughs> So I have this compound, I live out in Vegas. I got about 17 people that live, no, I'm just kidding. No, uh, after he goes on stage, they all want to kill themselves. <laughs> all right. <laughs> they pass out, they, 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 they pass out Kool-Aid. <laughs> and the audience takes themselves out. Yeah, <laughs> we go and we take naps on little twin beds upstairs. <laughs> I don't think people give you enough credit for like what how, what you mean to comedy and how comedy is in you. <laughs> I've said this before that comedy picks you, you don't pick comedy. I have to say the sweet sweet spot was probably 1992. You know when I was when I was starring in films, I was doing HBO specials, comedy albums, uh, touring, um, MTV. Never he done that. Cut yeah. You know, I was doing all these different things and no one else was really doing it at the time. And, and I was super young and it was awesome. <laughs> the best part about the store for me growing up was watching guys like Richard Pryor come in here with just a piece of paper, a half audience and just trying to figure it out. And that to me is what the store really is. Is, is, is It's not about the sold out shows, it's not about it's about trying to figure it out. It's the gym. It right was here. always Eddie Murphy. Yeah. It was always Eddie Murphy. Uh, yeah. It just, that's it yeah, for me. He was, I used to watch him in here. Eddie Murphy. Yeah. It was, I, I was like in a booth. It, like literally like when he came out, I mean, you can tell. I mean, he used to roll in here with Rolls Royces and all his crew and he would get on that stage. It was like, you couldn't believe it because he was the biggest star in the world. But here, it was just, I mean, the main room, I mean, Sam Kennison on Sunday nights when he was the man, you had Hugh Hefner here, you know, Madonna, you know, uh, you know Goldie Hawn, what, I don't know, it was just, you know, Warren Beatty, I don't know. You know, all these people would just show up. And I used to watch Cheech and Chong um, here develop their Up in Smoke show. So it was, for me, it was like just, I was young, but I got it. If you're a comic and you know any kind of history and you and you you must know some history because you didn't just start being a comic at eight years old or whatever, you you you, you were influenced. All those people graced to this stage. I was I in my early 20s and I was like, oh, I want to be a comic. And then I started doing open mics and then that that's when the reality of this world came into play where it was like, how do you get on stage? Well, your mom has to own a club. You know, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Actually, I really found out about the comedy store by taking a comedy class, which was taught by mm. your sister, R.I.P. How did she get you to enroll into the, you just saw her name on a pamphlet? No, 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 it was just like, it was, it like, was just like- A you comedy class? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it yeah. said Sandy Shore? Yeah, yeah, did yeah. Did it say the sister of Polly Shore, the, 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 the daughter of Mitzi Shore? Um, the, I, I think in her bio it did say, it I don't did. think you were mentioned though. Mm. I don't think, okay. I think it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the things, what makes it what it, what it is, is because of uh, Mitzi, because of his mom, the process you had to go through to become a part of the comedy store family. Yeah, she didn't make it easy. No, it wasn't easy. Yeah. I remember the first yeah. time I ever showcased, she wouldn't even look at me, you know? I had to come over, I'm trying to talk to her and it was just nothing, you know what I mean? Nothing. And then it wasn't, it wasn't until like a year or so later when they were doing the, the showcases actually in here, her health was already, you know, she wasn't coming in as often. But, you know, I did my, my second showcase after almost, almost two years later. And then I, I walk out here and they're helping her out in the hallway. And the first words she ever said to me was, you were funny. Yeah, and then that's it. That was my mom's thing. You know, it started when she was younger. It started with my dad. She would help develop comedians. And that was like who she was. So that's why she wanted the store so bad because it was in her blood. She wanted to help comedians develop, whoever it was. I mean, you go down the list of Gary Shanley or the, the Roseanne or, or, you know, all the guys that started here, you know, went through Mitzi and she loved it. You know, she loved, you know, being hard on them and she loved, you know, developing them and then seeing them blossom. The world famous comedy store is usually open 365 days a year, but tonight it has gone dark as the comedy world mourns 
Mitzi Shore. My dad, you know, a lot of people don't, they, they know my mom, they know the story, they don't know my, my dad as much, so. Yeah, my dad was great. He, my dad was one of the originals. He started in, in the 50s. You know, he all he wanted to do is do stand up. He was touring. He was a touring comic. He'd play any place that he could play. You know, he'd play uh, strip clubs. He'd play bowling alleys. He'd play, you know, the Catskills, all the different little venues. He was on tour, and that's where he met my mom. Him and his buddy started this place, Rudy DeLuca, in the ninth, uh, 1972. My dad needed a place to perform. You know, he was a comic, and the owner of the building, Frank Sennis, you know, basically called him up and said, hey, you, you, you want to take, take over the room? Originally, it was the original room, just one room. And then um, he took it over and he, he ran it for a couple of years. I think it, for me, I think it feels like, you know, a, you know, Yankee Stadium. You know, it's got that history, the forum, you know, Chinese theater, you know, it's got the Capitol Records. You know, it's got that, that history. Also, the stories that came out of this place. And then the feeling, you know, of the building as well. You know, you just feel like it's an old glove. Well, this still is Hollywood. This is still where you want to come to be on TV, be in movies, live your dream, follow your dreams, follow in the path of the greats that came before you. Somehow you're going to end up here. Dun, 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 dun. Start spreading the news. I don't know the Hollywood song, but it's the same. But we'll yeah. make it in the city. It was Never. like, look at those mountains. Look at those trees. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the red that bum over there. Yeah. <laughs> Down on the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love L.A. I love L.A. Why do we have a song? You know what I mean? Yeah, we have a song. Yeah. So don't let any of what we said discourage you TikTokers and you dreamers out there in middle America or overseas come to come to hollywood hey big shout out to eric and paulie really appreciate both of them the comedy store is still so much fire and magic really appreciate that guess what la week rolls on there's more ahead make sure you like and subscribe so you get some of it i'll see you tomorrow Hey, tune into The Carlos Watson Show. It's like no other. You're going to enjoy it every weekday on YouTube.